in. All right, today we are going to talk about five things that people are doing wrong when it comes to um, their diet. You know, overall, we want to feel amazing, right? We want to look good. We don't need to have ripped abs necessarily, but you know, we want to feel our best. And a lot of times we're not going to feel our best if we're carrying, our long, carrying around extra weight. Uh, not that it's... Not that it's wrong, you know, we want to just be optimally healthy. And the goal here is if you optimize your health with these five things, naturally the weight is going to just come off of you without even really trying. Okay, so in this workshop, I'm going to talk about how if there's five things at play, okay? And when you get these five things nailed down, you're going to feel balance in the mind, the body, and the spirit, okay? A uh, little backstory, you know, nutrition has always been... Not that it's easy, come easy to me. I've always just been very conscious of it. I like feeling good. Uh, when I was in high school, I liked performing well in my sports. Uh, I cared a lot about just, uh, I was so goal driven that I knew from a young age that I had to eat. Now, here's the funny thing is my, uh, when I was in high school, my friends would make fun of me because I had to eat like in every single class. I was so weird. Like I would wake up in the morning uh, and go to school. I would really distinctly remember this my senior year of high school. I'd go to school early in the morning. And so I'd have uh, usually English muffin with peanut butter and, and butter and go to school. And then by, by like my second class, I'm already starving again. So I'd have peanut butter and jelly. And then like lunch came around and I'd have a whole lunch. and. Then before soccer practice, I'd have to eat another meal. And then I would go right from soccer practice, go to my job because I was working already. And so, and then I have to, I was like food prepping since I was 15, 16 years old. So did that play a big role probably in how I look and how I feel today? Absolutely. Like you can't get around the fact of food prep. In fact, if you're like, no, 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 Robbie, there's no way I am not food prepping just turn this off now because food prep is a big part of it, but it's not the only part. That's just the first. To lay the foundation, you're gonna to have to know that you're going to have to think ahead about food a little bit more. Um, so I, I, I was naturally like always hungry. I, I mean, when I first started dating Victor, I didn't work out before then. And he was, you know, meathead, loved to go to the gym. So I'd go start going to the gym with him. And it was insane the amount of food I needed in order to go to the gym. And then like we would work out from eight to 10 at night at Gold's Gym. And I would get so hangry. It was just like, don't talk to me until I get home and I, and I eat. Now, there were a couple of things that I was doing right, but there were a couple of things that I was doing wrong. And that's uh, what I'm gonna cover right now. Is like, in some ways it was great that my metabolism was obviously going, but the fact that I got hangry was an indicator that I was not regulating my blood sugar with the right types of food. So we really wanna make sure um, that we, we aren't getting these highs and lows, okay? We shouldn't feel like we're on a sugar rush and then just so low that we like are sketching, okay? Usually if that's going on, you've got some other issues and what those other issues might be linked to is what I'm gonna go through today, okay? In another course, I'll go through the specifics on how to regulate your, your blood sugar with the exact foods. But for this video, we're just going to cover the why, the framework for what it takes so that you don't have to diet anymore. You can eat as much as you want of certain foods and so that you really just feel like your food is actually being used for a greater purpose. Because I think sometimes we get stuck in this obsession with you know, maybe how we look or, and we're trying to eat a certain way so that we fit into a dress size. And that's not, that should not be the goal. Food, the goal of food should be to fuel your bigger purpose in life, your bigger desires, all these other things we want to achieve other than just that dress size. Okay. So then fast forward a couple years and Victor and I start dating and we go to San Felipe for spring break. And when we're in San Felipe for spring break, it was so funny because I would, we, you know, I don't know if you've been to Mexico, but there'd be all these little taco shops down, you know, where the bars are. And it's like the exact same taco shops lined up. And it was like $5 for chicken, beans, rice, and tortillas. And you'd have, you know, make yourself like four or five tacos out of it. And it was a good plate. Well, 
I wouldn't touch rice then. No, no, no. If I touch rice, I thought for sure I was going to get so fat from eating rice. So I'd go into each one. And of course, I didn't speak Spanish. Victor would always speak Spanish for me. And he's like telling them like, oh, just meat and beans. No tortillas, no rice. And they look at her like, oh, you white girl, you're so weird. But whatever. And, and that's what I do. The irony is that we'd go to the bar after that and I would drink like three pina coladas. So what good was that? I mean, maybe I saved some calories in the in the rice and tortillas and used it in the pina colada and maybe there's some coconut milk so there was fat in it. The point being is like, I used to be so uber conscious of every, of the wrong things, let's say that. I was definitely uber conscious. Now, if I was in that same situation today, um, I probably would still hold the rice and tortilla just because I really don't enjoy them that much and because the rice is not always cooked with just tomato sauce or how I would cook Mexican rice now. So I would still probably say no to the rice because there's extra preservatives in there or there's some pry chemicals. If you look at, a lot of times they make it out of the El Pato uh, in the grocery store. If you look at El Pato, it's in the tomato sauce and you look on it, it has yellow number five in it. And that's the first thing I'm gonna get to right now. So I, I was super self-conscious about all that. Now, if if you love pina coladas, I'd, like, I'd be like, all right, you can make a pina colada at home yourself. It's actually not that bad if you're using the right ingredients. So let me get my wonderful pen and put number one. Number one rule, real food, okay? If you are struggling with a diet, that's kind of light, huh? Let's see if I find another pen. If you are struggling with diet plans, your number one thing that you absolutely need to do is start eating real food, only real food, okay? So that means you have to get good at reading labels. I'm gonna move this over here so that I can stand. Real food. So the question comes down to, did it come from a mom? Did it come from a seed? And then on top of that, is it, real food in like how it's supposed to be grown, meaning it's not a GMO seed, uh, which is getting really hard to avoid sometimes these days. And is it, um, you know, cows aren't supposed to be fed corn. And, you know, so if I say real food, like you're gonna have to get like wild caught, grass fed, those type of things, free range, because that's how they were really designed to be raised. Okay, so it's not so much that it needs to be organic. Like if you get, uh, beef that's organic beef, a lot of times that means it's just fed organic corn. Well, cows aren't supposed to be eating corn. They're supposed to be eating grass. And so it's really important that you're keen in on this because your body is designed to thrive, okay? It is built, it, it knows how to heal, okay? We don't need all this allopathic medicine necessarily. We need, we need to just nurture our bodies and care for our bodies so that our bodies can uh, do what they were designed to do. And so as long as you're feeding it real food, it knows how to do that. And you can look out there and see tons of, tons of research on why you should be vegan. And you can see tons of research on why you should do the carnivore diet or why you should be paleo or all these things. But one of the common threads through all of these is it's real food. Nowhere in it is saying to have high doses of yellow number five or, uh, ingredients, chemicals that you can't pronounce. We don't, we don't want that. So realistically, like for our family, we eat, I mean, I have to have cook four pounds of beef for our dinner and there's never leftovers. There's seven of us. And that's a lot of food. And nobody in our family is, has any issues with weight or health or things like that because it's, it's good source food. And it's all, there's a ton of sweet potatoes. There's a ton of salad on the table. There's uh, salad doesn't have chemicals in the salad dressing. The salad dressing is olive oil and vinegar and seasonings, uh, maybe avocado, all real food. If you get anything out of this video, only eat real food will make a huge difference. Now, if you've been eat, you know, when you go out to eat, there's no guarantees. They might say something is, oh, it's farm to table or it's healthy, but there's a lot of times where you don't have control over what they're adding, especially if it's really tasty. A lot of times that means they're adding a lot of sugar and salt. And how do you know it's actually sugar and not high fructose corn syrup? You know, that's a big one. If you're taking in high fructose corn syrup, canola oil, those are all uh, destroy your metabolism. 
Those are not things you wanna be putting in your body. So you're much better off, like I was saying, if you want that pina colada every so often and you went and worked out, you earn those carbs, yeah, make it with um, organic pineapple juice and pineapple chunks and whole fat coconut milk and go for it. You know, it's, it's not my favorite splurge, but there are plenty of things I splurge on all the time that are not, they would not fit into any diet box. I can't do any of them. I can't do keto. I couldn't do paleo. I couldn't, I'm too individualistic. You know, I like to, um, I just like to enjoy life. And in order to enjoy life, sometimes you're gonna not be, sometimes I'm gonna have some sugar and not be um, keto. And sometimes I'm gonna be not paleo. And I have, I like beans. I like eating beans and that's, you know, keto diet, you're not supposed to have legumes. I'm like, Shh. I love peanut butter. Now, there's a good chance though, if you've been eating poorly for many years, you have a damaged metabolism. And so it might take a little while, a little time to heal that you might need to do a gut health reboot. And that's in the next course. You can definitely sign up for that and I go through exactly how to do that. This is, remember, to get the big picture of what element you need to focus on. So real food is number one. Number two is intuition. You know, I think one of the biggest things people uh, mess up on is they get a diet book and it says you're supposed to eat this, 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 and this, and they just follow the rules, okay? If you know anything, you see my shirt, defy the norm. Defy the norm for me even goes into when it comes to eating. You do not, just because it's in a book and it says you have to eat this way, um, and I think of, uh, what's the, ah, I'm not gonna be able to remember it. Um, ooh, what's that? There's a, there's a method of eating that I can't think of. Oh, well. So even if you are, you don't need to follow the rules all the time when it comes to, to nutrition. You need to use some intuition. You need to be able to think like, uh, I, t I tend to promote the blood type book. I like a lot of what it's, I notice in our family, some, my husband's an O, he does better in grass-fed beef. I'm a type A. I do better with fish and a little bit of poultry and not, not as much beef, but does that mean I never eat beef? Heck no. I probably have grass fed beef three times a week and I feel great. Um, you know, I'm not supposed to touch nightshades. Does that mean I never touch an eggplant? No, every so often I still have eggplant. So it's important to use intuition. It's also important sign. It's good to have that negative feedback. For instance, I'll have no wine for a while and all of a sudden I'll have two glasses of wine and I'll wake up the next day like, Oh my goodness, I feel horrible. Sometimes we need that failure in order for our body to respond because in that cleansing process, we we get to we get more purity. We get to see and use better intuition in like, hmm, this is what I need to thrive. If we don't have those moment those spaces in our life of having indulging in something and then taking it out, sometimes it's hard to notice. Okay, so if you're con if if what you've been eating for a long time doesn't seem to be helping for you, you should shift to extremes. You should try eating a lot of a certain thing. I mean, grass-fed beef, I think, is a, a big one. Most people are so scared of meat that I really encourage, especially if you're a type O, like just have grass-fed beef for a week. You know, type Bs, Victor has had many clients who we've said, just cut out chicken for an entire week. And they're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe the difference. But you don't know if you're just grazing on it throughout the week. If you're having it one day and then not the next. Sometimes it's hard to tell. Um, sometimes eggs are one of those. I know my daughter, Gabby's like, she'll only notice when she cuts eggs for a while and then she'll eat them again and be like, ooh, I don't feel so good. Wow. Okay, so this is where it's really important that these two go together because is an egg a real food? Yes, we have our own chickens that we get our eggs from. They're amazing eggs but that doesn't mean that her body's ready to digest them. Okay? She might have some type of allergen from eating a lot of them before. She might, when we get to the next three, it could be one of these next three that are causing a reaction. But for whatever reason, it is so, it's, it's so important that we balance these two, that we use an intuitive approach to, and this doesn't mean like, mm, intuitively, I feel like eating three bags of potato chips right now and a big cart of ice cream or a carton of ice cream. Mm, my intuition says that. No, but it's okay if you do occasionally. In fact, in my next, in the next course, um, we have go-tos and like our go-tos are, sometimes, you know, we road trip a lot. 
And sometimes our go-tos, we have to pick the healthiest choice in a situation. So for us, sometimes that's a potato chip. And so I'll go through the potato chip aisle and ideally I want an organic or non-GMO potato cooked in olive oil or if I have sunflower oil. I'd rather not it be in canola oil. And sometimes that's your, like that's, that's all we can find. You know, we've, we travel all over the world and we have, we barely ever eat out, even when we're traveling. So for instance, when we go to Hawaii, we'll go tent camp in Hawaii. And right when we land, I go straight to Costco and everybody's starving. It'd be so much easier just to drive through Burger King, but we don't. We go straight to Costco and I go in there and I get guacamole, uh, one of the whole chickens. Now I granted they're not organic. In fact, I feel whole, I can't even eat that more than a piece or two just to hold me off because it doesn't taste that good. But it's better than eating a, a burger that's full of corn and soy from McDonald's or whatever. And so we'll get that and I'll get organic to, uh, tortilla chips and some salsa. And then we'll also buy all of our food that we're going to take with us to go um, to the campground. And so we'll, we'll double dip. Like we're finding something that we can eat right then that's whole foods, real food, okay? Even if it's not perfectly non-GMO, it's still real food. Um, I mean, think about how many things you can mess up. Costco's hard, it's hard to go through with blinders. Um, in my next, in the next course, I have a list of all the things that we buy at Costco that make it so you can eat real food. And then you want to, you know, intuition. It doesn't mean that, hey, if I, ha if my only real food is chips and salsa for dinner, but it's an organic chip and it's not canola oil, and that it's just tomato, onion, cilantro in my salsa, I might have an entire dinner of huge bag of tortilla chips and salsa and be like, all right, and some guacamole, good to go. We usually also grab some, uh, one of the big salad mixes when we go there. So little things like that, when we also go, go to camp, um, so we've camped in, in Hawaii, we've also do this in Norway, we've camped through Germany, uh, Ireland, Nor Norway, I said, um, I think those are the main, but New Zealand. And every, in all of those cases, we're bringing a burner with us. And when we land, I know to walk into the grocery store and look for, well, lettuce or spinach, the best meat I can find. You can't always find organic grass fed, but some, you know, you find at least it's meat. You look at it like, okay, it looks like it's not been frozen, injected with water and sodium. It's, it's fresh meat and, um, We'll get you know fruits and vegetables, and then cans of beans, cans of beans and rice, or sweet potatoes, or regular potatoes. Those those just end up being your staple. There's this misconception that potatoes are bad for you, that rice is bad for you, and if you're doing these next three things, that's you're you're really fine. I mean, think about it. Rice, it's in it's it's rice when you read the label. Now, when you get bread, that's a different story, right? We're getting. It's hard to know, and especially if you get an organic rice. A lot of rice is sprayed with pesticides, so you do want to try to get organic rice as much as possible. But a lot of the bread has, I mean, think about it. Most loaves of bread have like 30 ingredients. Um, you know, in the worst, in a bind, to have like a sourdough bread that just says wheat, sourdough starter, and whatever, one other thing that you can read, that's fine occasionally. You know, we, we make, we have to do a give and take. But the big thing is noticing intuition to notice how does this make me feel? The other thing with intuition is we think we're supposed to eat breakfast, snack, lunch, snack, dinner. I personally, um, I don't eat that way anymore. I'm like, I think for like 10 years now, I'm more intermittent fasting. I pretty much, or we call, I call it warrior style. Um, most of our family eats like that too. Victor and Danny don't, and Tati don't do as well on that. But the other four of us pretty much, you know, very little throughout the day. I pretty much just go coffee until right before dinner. And then, um, and then I can have a, a really nice, huge dinner. That works for me. That doesn't, Victor tries to do it and it's just too much stress on his body. He needs, his intuition says he needs to have his meals a couple times a day. Now, think about our ancestors. Our bodies didn't, in history, we didn't necessarily always get a breakfast, a lunch, a dinner. Our bodies learn to adapt. And so it's good to, again, to test your body and see it might do better with intermittent fasting. Now, if intermittent fasting, you've catch yourself when it's time to eat and you're reaching for the wrong things, 
uh, then it might be time to like scale back a little bit. Maybe you need to eat earlier throughout the, in the day or have a little bit more nuts. Keeping your blood sugar stable is really, really important. Okay, so the next one is stress. Now, you can eat only real food and be super intuitive about what you should be eating. But if your stress level is high, if you constantly feel like you're being chased, uh, you're, you're always running to catch a bus, you're, um, you're not sleeping, that's a huge one, okay? That right there, it doesn't matter how much you do, number one and two. If you lead a high stress life, just guarantee you're gonna have a little bit of extra fat that you just can't get rid of. Um, it's just your body needs rest. And I know some people like to say that, oh, well, I can get by on six hours and trust me, I'm up there with them that I wanna say that I, but I know it's a lie. I know it's just me telling myself because my desire to be successful or my desire to achieve something or my desire for something else is greater than my desire for how I look at the time. And I think I can outdo it and it always comes back, always. I've had so many years of, of trying to outrun sleep, to think that I can get by on very little sleep. I can get by on less sleep than say my husband, but not much less. And it, it always comes up, it always catches up with me. So how, ways to avoid this, if you are, look, I'm super driven, super high energy, have to do so many things, which is why for me, I have to force myself time to meditate. I have to force myself time to do yoga. I have to, find ways to actively lower my cortisol throughout the day. And that might be what you need to do. You might find that you're like, there's no way I can keep doing what I want in life and, and not sleep more or and sleep more than six hours. Robin, I don't have that much time in my day. And I'd be like, okay, that's fine. But what about two 10 minute meditations throughout the day? I mean, then you're over overall, instead of sleeping eight hours here, you're only having to set aside six hours and four, uh, 20 minutes. So, Play around with that. Stress is absolutely a huge thing. And because of it, that's where we get caught up in the, uh, we think that all, well, it really doesn't play a role because I eat only 1200 calories. And so a calorie is a calorie, right? Wrong. Calorie is not a calorie. It does, it, how it is metabolized and used in your body is completely different. And so it's really important to understand that, uh, I know some people who will be like, I can only eat a, tw I eat a 1200 calorie diet and I'm always struggling with my weight. And then I can put them on a 2500 calorie diet, eating different types of foods and affect their stress level and the weight just falls off. So keep that in mind, stress is huge. Okay, number four is one where, it's gonna be a little bit more of a stretch for you to believe me on this one, but Trust me on this one. Uh, it might take time for you to do your own research because I don't want you to just outsource your truth to me and be like, okay, well, Robin said, well, test it and see. Uh, energetic blocks is what I want to call this one. And it took me energetic blocks. It took me recently till I really realized, till I felt how important this was. I wrote a book, A Playful Life, and in it, I talk about how for years, I, I mean, I, I told you, I, count, I counted calories, I wouldn't eat rice, I wouldn't touch a tortilla, and all of those weren't necessarily bad habits, but the thing that I noticed that was the, the big change is that I would work out for the intention of staying fit. I need to work out, and so it was like, I was adding another chore to the equation. So then I'm hyper vigilant about what I'm eating and did I get a workout in? Did I burn enough calories? It was kind of a hamster wheel that you don't, that's really hard to get off. But once you get off, you know, it's, it's really freeing. And so I would, I would um, when Tatiana was born, I was kind of done with like, I'm so tired of, of just working out. And uh, I was, I didn't want to be home all the time. I had done that for so many years. So I started surfing. We'd go to the beach and surf all the time. And well, I finished a surf session. I'm like, I'm too tired to work out. I don't want to go work out. And so I just kind of got sucked into surfing for a lot of times. And I just, the, the weight just like fell off of me. And um, in fact, like, I mean, I was probably a good five to 10 pounds lighter than I am now when I'm surfing all the time. 
Well, now I'm back in this opposite end of like, when we're in a house and it's winter, I don't get my, I don't get that same uh, fulfillment factor. And really I'm kind of combining four and five together. I should have done it in the, I should have done it in the reverse order to set you up. But I, I had something that was just so fun and movement based. I mean, that's why I called it a playful life. It was just, you just lost yourself in something. And for everyone, it's different. I'm not saying surfing's the answer. When I'm out climbing a lot, the same thing happens. When I hike a lot, there's just a shift in energy. Does that mean you should never work out? Heck no. Working out, especially if it's super fun for you, great. It's just when you go to work out, if the intention is I'm working out so that I, I lose weight, so that um, maybe I'll feel more accepted with myself and that's where we come into problems and that's where this energetic block comes. So you probably know that I'm a huge fan of the, the chakras. And when I started doing this element of fun and found this like playfulness and the weight just stays off and you can just start eating all that you want. I mean, an ideal day for me was to wake up, have a cup of coffee, go surf, finish with two pieces of bacon when I got back, another cup of coffee, chill until dinner time and have a huge, not chill, I don't chill, but whatever, chill as far as eating. Don't, I didn't eat anything else. It would be like, let's go. Let's, let's get the blog done. Let's take care of homeschooling. Let's do the business, things like that. So these energetic wheelhouses in your body. So you have seven chakras from the crown of your head to your tailbone. These become blockages when for us to metabolize our food properly. So if you have a root chakra blockage, Meaning if you're not feeling safe and secure, if you're on high alert, if you're anxious, well, guess what? That's, that's cortisol being shot out all the time. I'm worried. I'm worried. I got to defend. I got to be prepared. Okay. Well, then that ties back into the stress. If we're always putting off cortisol, our body will not, it, cortisol is literally a fat storing hormone. So that's not going to help you as far as losing weight and feeling great, feeling energetic. Okay. So no matter if, if you do the real food, you use intuition, you're out having fun, you're getting your sleep, but you have a root chakra blockage, you're gonna struggle, okay? You're gonna struggle with losing weight. And so we need to heal that. We need to find ways to heal and balance that root chakra, okay? Um, pitu third eye. Third eye is uh, linked to your pituitary gland. Well, that's the master of your metabolism. So if you have third eye blockages, if you have trouble um, with intuition, finding clarity, um, finding discern, like using discernment okay I, that's where it's that's how i can tell you that the energetic block and this intuition are are closely related and they're important those things are going to start to affect your pituitary gland they're going to start affecting your metabolism um you're gonna notice if you get headaches a lot if you have sinus problems that's uh usually an indicator and i'll say personally i notice when it, I do like having my one beer or one glass of wine, but let's say I have a fun weekend and I have a couple. We'll go out fr Friday night, oh, I'll just have two beers, it's okay. Saturday night, mm, well, three's okay. I'm having so much fun, I love to have fun. So I get I get in those situations often where I'm like, you're in the moment, you're like, yeah, this is fun, all right, order one more round. By, thir by uh, Sunday night, I can tell you, I'm like, ooh, my pituitary gland is like, my hormones just don't feel right. Everything's all kind of off. Um, and, and the better you are about doing like where you'll splurge and then, and then purge, basically take those things out of your body, the more intuition you're gonna have. You're going to notice like, ooh, yeah, I probably shouldn't do that very often. Um, so you can self-regulate, but will that one weekend of partying completely ruin everything? No, but if it's a common thing every weekend, yeah, then it'll probably will. If it's a once in an occasional thing, the goal is that eventually you are finding more, uh, finding substitutions. So like for me, I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to have one, but I'm going to bring, actually, let me back up. Here's what Victor and I used to do. For a long time, uh, we lived in Coronado and every Thursday night, we'd go out to dinner at our favorite restaurant. Well, we, we, didn't like to eat out. I mean, we didn't, we liked the, the idea, like if we had five kids at home, it's like if we had a nice dinner at home, it was kind of hard with the kids. Like we really couldn't connect. You feel me? And so we'd go out to dinner and we're like, oh, I just don't want to eat. It's, I know it's kind of real food, but it really wasn't. Um, 
that's why I say like the best farm to table restaurant, it's still not the same as eating your own food that you're cooking at home. So we would go and split a hamburger because if I'm gonna splurge, I am absolutely gonna splurge on a hamburger, but we would split it. And so you get to enjoy, it would come with that and a side of fries and they're truffle fries and they're so good. And we'd split the fries and split that. And we could have done way, way more damage, absolutely. But it was just enough to feel like, all right, really the reason is that we'd go out is because I loved going there for a beer because their beers would rotate every week. And I enjoy getting a beer on tap and having the fun excitement of, ooh, what's on tap this week? And there'd be live music, you know, it fulfilled so many parts of me that, I didn't want to give it up, but at the same time, you can't just go have a beer and then not eat anything. You'd feel like the date would end for too short to begin with. And then you feel kind of embarrassed as it was. I felt embarrassed ordering a meal to split because it made us look so cheap. But because of these energetic blocks, I didn't care what they thought about me. My, I respected myself more than what they were going to think of me for only having a half a burger. They probably thought it was like anorexic or something because anyways, we, we sit there and we'll have half a half a burger, split our fries, each get a beer, but we always had food ready for us when we got home. So we, we basically had two dinners that night. We'd eat there just for to enjoy the experience, and then we'd go home and have a pound of grass-fed beef with salad all ready for us. And that is kind of the secret. I mean, family parties were the same thing. When we would go to family parties, our family, um, especially Victor's family, had amazing get-togethers, huge carne asada barbecues. So you, you have meat and tortillas and guac and all these side dishes really was where you can do the damage. All these side dishes. And so it was hard for me to eat and feel good after it. And sometimes I'd splurge and be like, well, a taco is not that bad. It's just a tortilla and guac and meat. So it, it's kind of real food. You know, it's not well-sourced meat. And usually the sauce that they're putting on the marinade definitely has chemicals in it. So it's to, to be nice of you to have one or two, but man, I'd feel it. I'd pay the price later and just feeling sluggish. So like, it just it was just not thriving. And so what a lot of times I would do is I would, Victor and I would just eat beforehand. We'd have our whole meal and then we'd go to the party and have fun and instead just, um, have a beer and just enjoy the social hour and not necessarily have food or we'd find chips and guac some way to some way around it uh that that's kind of what you end up having to do because if you really want to affect your energy level how you look you know if you don't want to keep struggling with oh i don't want to do this diet or i can't it's hard to stay keto you know there's a lot of great parts to all diet programs I mean, keto Another tip is like we'd go to parties and I would just find the olives, you know, technically that's a high fat, finding avocados and olives, organic cheeses, things like that, which would be fit into what you'd consider a keto diet. It's just, I'm not trying to attain ketosis all the time. Like you, there's a, there's this balance. That's what I'm trying to say. Like you don't have to constantly check if you're releasing ketone bodies. You can just find those healthy fat foods and integrate them more into your life and make sure you're not sabotaging yourself by having high fructose corn syrup, canola oil, um, food dyes, all those things, okay? And I have a list on the, if you uh, click the link below, I'll take you to my framework for how exactly we break down macronutrients and supplements and gives you a much clearer picture of what your one week nutrition should look like so that you're following all of these things so that you're eating real foods and you're setting yourself up to have fun and um there's not energetic blocks in that one that's i have another chakra healing course uh that you could check out that has how to balance out all these energies in, inside you so that you set yourself up for for optimal um optimal metabolism optimal energy production okay so I hope this helped you. I wanted to make sure that this was free. So we should all have the resources to know exactly what it takes to have a healthy mind, body, spirit connection and to live our life to the fullest because, you know, we we're really lucky, even though things seem a little bit hard and scary right now, we're also at the cusp of like so much potential in the world. And it's up to each one of us to be self accountable for our own energy so that we can take this energy and give back to the world and make the world a better place. Thanks.